Hello everyone, this is Bruno with a new segment called 10 Minutes or Less with Bruno No BS. A very simple, casual interview here. No fancy cameras. Today I have the honor to speak with Michelle, COO of Reckless Roofing, one of the biggest roofing contractors in Tennessee. And also she's a member of the National Woman in Roofing, the Tennessee chapter. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Bruno. How long have you been in our roofing industry? I've been in the roofing industry about 12 years. Uh, 10 years of that is with Rackley Roofing. When did you realize roofing would be a career for you? Probably day one of, of getting into roofing. I think that most of us that are in roofing kind of feel that once you're in, you're in for life. And, you know, it's, it's almost an immediate thing. Once you join roofing, you don't get out. It's, you know, um, it's, you're in it forever. <laughs> uh, you are part of the National Women uh, in Roofing, uh, the Tennessee chapter. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, your functions and what you do? Sure. So I joined National Women in Roofing about four years ago, I think. Um, I started the Tennessee Council because we didn't have one. So it just made sense for me to go ahead and start that. And uh, it's since changed hands, uh, Liz Tipping with Cottony Construction Law is actually our chair now. Um, I've served on the national board as a recruitment chair and um, as treasurer. And currently I serve on the national executive committee as secretary. We've seen a lot of people give us support over the last uh, several years. Uh, we've had a lot of support from the beginning, but We've seen more people be interested in what we're doing and, and seeing the impact that we're making in the industry. We, uh, we've been doing uh, National Women in Roofing Day um, as kind of the kickoff to IRE every year and attendance just keeps going you know, up and up every year. And, and so there's definitely a need for National Women in Roofing. Any advice for roofing contractors, you know, uh, if they wanted to support, what do they have to do to support the National Women in Roofing. The first thing that you can do uh, as a roofing contractor to support National Women in Roofing is sign people up to be members. It's $60 a year, so it's very affordable. And we actually offer all of the females in our company um, membership to National Women in Roofing as just part of their employment. Oh, incredible. So that's something that, yeah, it's, we put our money where our mouth is. Um, we're uh, founding sponsors of National Women in Roofing. Um, but not everybody, you know, has the funds to do that, especially right now with us being, you know, kind of in limbo of what's going to happen with COVID. So um, if you can't support financially, you know, on a bigger scale, then yeah, just have some uh, members uh, support them by paying for a membership. Uh, men can be members too. So, you know, we love having yeah, that was one of the all questions sorts. because it, I was like, uh, you know, can I be a part of the, you know, I have no problem, you know. Uh, I think in roofing, there's no sex, you know. I think, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're there for a reason is to support our industry. What do you see for the future of our roofing industry, for the new generation, and for also for the women be part of our industry? I think that we need to um, really get the word out to the next generation and to, to women as well. Uh, that roofing is a very great career path. Um, you know, there's so many different things that you can do in roofing. Um, and, and for the most part, they're, they're very lucrative careers. So I think that we need to really get the word out about how professional our industry is and just kind of what we, what we have to offer. And specifically for the next generation, we really need to make sure that we focus on technology. <clears throat> I'm a member of RT3, Roofing Technology Think Tank where we try to really focus on technology and um, innovation. And it's something that the, the next generation really, that they thrive on it. And so if we're not on board, they're not gonna be on board either. So I think making sure that as contractors and manufacturers and distributors that we are giving every opportunity to, to be nimble in the industry. I'm sure you, you coach many of young, uh, young ladies to, you know, to join on, you know, Rackley and join also those type of associations. Always the main <laughs> questions for the young ladies when they come to you and ask you, why would I fit in? What do they ask for um, you? I think for the most part, um, women don't necessarily see that, that roofing is an opportunity. Uh, we tend to kind of um, self-sabotage ourselves and, and we don't think that we're good enough to do certain things. And so I think that we kind of go into it thinking that we can't do roofing. Um, you know, 
I remember the first time I got on a roof that I was scared to death, not of heights, but just like, they're going to realize that I'm a fake. They're going to realize that I'm a fraud. And um, so really just kind of, you know, explaining that, Hey, if this is something that you're interested in, do it. You know, do you love being outside? Do you love adventure? Do you love, you know, working with your hands? Then roofing's for you. So I think that really just making sure that they understand that that's an opportunity and that's a career path is important. Yeah, I wasn't sure if a man could be involved in those association. And I was about to put, uh, put a wig, shave my <laughs> and, and pretend I was a woman just to come there and support you guys. But I'm not going to do that. Now I'm going to support you guys 100% sure. How it is to work for one of the largest roofing uh, contractors in Tennessee? Well, I began at Rackley as a receptionist about 10 years ago and really grew the service department that we had here. Uh, we didn't have a service department when I started, and now we have about 25 trucks in service. So, you know, we've really just just grown it. And in, in that time, I've, I've had several different roles. I'm now the COO of Rackley. Um, one of the things I think that has helped us to grow is we have a really strong culture. Um, our employees want to be here and we really support one another. And I know, you know, people say, well, you're a family and everybody says that we're a family, but we really are here. Uh, we support each other and we love each other as family. And, and we really try to make sure that everybody is on the same page with what our culture is and what our values are. And I like that because it, take you as an example, you started as a secretary from the bottom and you went all the way to a successful, you know, uh, COO of one of the largest uh, roofing uh, roofing contractors in, in our industry. A lot of people say, oh, we are family, but are we really a family? You know, mm -hmm. there's a, two separate things, you know, some people say family, but there's not, in many cases, that's not the case, you know, and with Rackley, you know, you can see just by you being successful in what you do. How hard it is to separate business and family? I know you have kids. I do. I've got a husband and two sons, and I really don't think that I'd separate the two. Um, my kids know the employees and, and the um, the staff here at Rackley, and, and they, you know, they treat them like their, their family. Um, you know, they know if they see Troy that he's going to have M&Ms for them. They know if they awesome. see Curtis, our, yeah, our president, that, you know, he's going to play with them like he's, he's their age. Um, and, you know, one of my kids ran into, into one of our crews on a job site, actually. And he's like, hey, how's it going? You know, so I think that they have really seen kind of what, what it means to work for a company where the culture is great. And so I don't really have to separate out work and family. And my husband's very supportive of everything that I do, which is really great as well. But he's not in the roofing industry, right? Your husband? He's not. No, not at all. All right. So he's the, uh, you're the real man, I guess. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Any messages out there you want to give to people who follow my videos, uh, people that listen to you because you are well known too. And uh, also for Rackle Roofing, uh, it could be towards the COVID-19. I would say, first of all, thank you, Bruno, for, um, you know, sharing messages from contractors across the country. I think that this is great. And I think that that would be my advice. Um, don't be afraid to share what you're doing, because all that does is really raise the bar of professionalism in the industry. So um, doing things like this or joining um, different organizations where you can share ideas and thoughts and and really just just make this or make this industry a better industry. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. It was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, thank next you. Next time I'm in Tennessee, I'm definitely going to stop by and see you guys. And, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if I'll be able to shake your hands, but definitely <laughs> I want to see you and uh, talk to you guys from Rackley Roof. Thank you so much. We're excited right, to see you next you. time you're in Tennessee. I will. You'll be safe. You too.